Hi there, you're very welcome to Student Spotlight and today we're speaking to Claudia who is a third year uh, BSc student, that's our Bachelor of Science student and she's taking Maths, Chemistry and Biology, I think that's correct? That's correct. <laughs> good morning. How are you today? I'm, I'm good, how are you? Very, very well. And you're in Spain? I am, yes. <laughs> so you better give our, our viewers a little bit of a whistle stop tour of how you came to be in Maynooth and how come you're back in Spain right now. So um, I basically moved to Ireland when I was 12 and just to learn English. And I did from second year to all the way to sixth year in Ireland in a town called Old Castle in County Meath. And then I decided to go to Maynooth to pursue college. So you came to Ireland because you wanted to learn English and, yeah, and <laughs> where better to be immersed in English than in, uh, in an English speaking country like Ireland. Um, um, so, yeah. so what was it like moving from Zaragoza to, um, pardon my pronunciation, yeah, to, um, to Old Castle? How was that? Um, it was it, it was daunting to say the least because um, I was only 12 at the time and I remember at first I wasn't quite used to the Irish accent because when I was in Spain we learned English from like the English accent rather than the Irish accent so there was a, quite a few words that I wouldn't quite grasp onto but it took about maybe a month to get used to it and I've been really happy there since. So English was just a language that you were really enthusiastic about learning then? Well, or yeah, because in Spain we do learn English from a very young age so it's always yeah. been within us that we learn English in Spain. But then you're taking a science degree and so was science something that you were kind of fairly sure about from an early age too? Um, yeah, I've always I've always leaned more towards science than any other field. Um, I've always known I wanted to do a science related course, but I didn't know if I wanted to go into like a specific one or if I wanted to just first do a generic one and then look into what subjects I wanted to go into. So I knew Manute was the perfect option for me. So to take us back to Old Castle, then you're um, you're in your leaving. Did you do transition year as part of your studies in, did, in secondary? Yeah. Because in Spain, we started school very young and I was always a year. So I was always one year below everyone else in my school. So if they were 15 at the time, I would have been 14. And I did transition year because otherwise I would have been doing my leaving cert at age 16. And it was just way too young for me. So and it was also a great opportunity to just develop like skills. And and um, yeah, it was it was really good. Can you remember anything about transition year just very briefly? Was there anything that really stood out for you that you so um enjoyed? We did loads of um different courses, like computer related courses that would then come in handy when we were filling out our CVs to then apply for jobs. And then we also um yeah, we did a uh, do you new work placements or anything like yeah, that? Or I yeah. did three different work placements. I worked in a school, I worked in a pharmaceutical like lab, and then I I worked in a chemist. So Okay, so did any of those give you a hint then as to what you were going to do after college? Yeah. When I was working in the pharmaceutical lab, I was just, I was in my element, like I was just always looking for something to do. And I was just always asking, like, what else can I do? I'm loving this. And, yeah, yeah. I really liked so it. then you, you're, you chose your subjects and going into fifth year and what did you choose? So when I was in fifth year, I did biology, chemistry, French and geography, as well as um, English and maths. I didn't take Irish because... Um, I was 12 when I went to school and at that age you're not required to take Irish if you're a foreigner. Sure yeah you were born, born in Spain so you're at that exemption. <laughs> um, so you are you then were as you say researching courses and you knew that there was a course in Maynooth which was more of a general um, yeah. beginning in terms of you could choose different subjects so did you look elsewhere though I mean Maynooth is, is you know, probably as close to you in, in Old Castle as the likes of uh, um, I also Dublin. went to a few open days in UCD, DCU and DIT because I, I see in Spain I do live in a quite big town so I didn't think Maynooth would be big enough for me if you know what I mean so I was always looking at Dublin but then when I went to the open day in Maynooth um, I loved how the sense of community you had everyone was a student there and I was like you don't get that in Dublin so even though I did I did go to other open days in Dublin I didn't like them as much as I liked them yeah okay there's lots to be said for the the town yeah the context the university of the town and, yeah, and the north and south campus <laughs> yeah 
Um, so did you uh, did you commute then from Old Castle or did you live on campus? So what I did, I lived on campus for the first year. Yeah, it was much easier for me to just live on campus rather than to commute every day because it, it is about an hour and a half bus mm. like journey to, to go down and then another one, an hour and a half to go back home. So I was just, I, I thought that was just too much. Yeah. And, and moving away from home isn't something that you're uh, <laughs> unfamiliar with. So <laughs> That wasn't going to be too difficult for you, or was it? How was it moving to the university campus from from home? Um, it was it was good. I really liked it because, um, as you said, I'm quite used to just <laughs> leaving everything behind and just packing moving. your bags. Yeah, and uh, so I really liked it because I met we really, I, I lived in the River Apartments, uh, so I lived with four four other girls, and they were just so lovely, and still to this day, like they're probably some of my best friends in college. What the river apartments? What distinguishes those? Is there anything about that block that's different? Um, there's there's loads of them. <laughs> first of all, foremost, there's loads of them, and then they're probably the newer site as well on okay. campus. So um, that's where I lived. So you moved in with a, a group of unknown girls, and you're all good friends now. Um, and yeah. and then you were starting out in general science, and you got to choose subjects math required, of course, in first year of the general science degree. Um, I guess in biology and chemistry from school, yeah. you were pretty set on those. Yeah. And then you had a fourth option. What did you I choose? did experimental physics. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I had never done physics before. Well, other than for um, junior cycle. But um, it was it was hard at first. But then once you put your head to it and just keep working away, it worked out. <laughs> but you were not going to continue with it on into, into no. second year? That was one of the subjects I knew I was going to drop after first year. What were labs like in the whole college, you know, moving from the Leaving Cert to now studying as a third level student? What could would you say were the main differences there? Well, I don't know for everyone else's school, but in my school, we did um, mm. one day a week. It was just labs. So because our teacher had the mindset that if we saw what was happening, we would understand it better. So, and she was right, because that's how I learned. And so she, one day a week, she would just keep it for labs. And then when I, went, when I went to college, it was one day a week that I did labs. So for me, it was kind of the norm. Okay. But it is true that chemist, the labs in college are run for about three hours, where in school, they're not that long. But um, I really like them, yeah. And then there's a lot of work that goes into, you I mean, you don't just kind of go in and out of the labs, you have to do no. your reports and all the, the write-ups and everything as well, so of course. you go in having to do a lab prep, which is probably just maybe a few questions long, just to kind of like know what's going on before the experiment. And then you go in, there's a pre-lab talk, <laughs> you do your experiment, a post-lab talk, and then you go home and do your write-up, so... Mm. Yeah. And what about lectures, tutorials, all of that? So... In first year, I had tutorials for maths and for chemistry. So um, chemistry, I had uh, one every two weeks, and then for maths, I had one every week. And they're they're great because you go in and it's an opportunity for you to ask questions in a more like one to one level. Whereas I know for some people, asking a question in a tutorial in a lecture can be kind of scary. Um, but um, they're great to just kind of like if you have questions, to ask. And then to uh, lectures, I just love them because you just, you sit there with your friends and you just, you know, hear the lecture talk. And it is true that sometimes it can be scary to ask questions there, but um, if you get over that. You, you can do it. it. Um, what about then your, you have your lectures, you, you have your tutorials, and then you have <laughs> exams, I presume, and continuous assessment. How, what kind of a breakdown was there for that? So in first year, um, we had, it was 25% continuous assessment and then 75% the same, the written exam at the end of the year. Well, for Christmas and then at the end of the year. And you have to work away through the whole semester in order to kind of like build up that CA and just to make sure you're not, you know, that doesn't bring you down on your um, overall grade. But um, yeah, it's, it's probably a good way to keep students working throughout the semester and not just bank everything on the final exam. Yeah. And of course, you have semesterized exams in as well. So at the end of semester one, the end of semester two, you know, when you're coming into first year into science, it, it's not required that you have studied biology or chemistry. You have to have studied a science subject. Yeah, so how do you manage that? I mean, if you're coming in having studied biology and chemistry 
and they're sort of being taken from I guess, uh, you know, sort of a beginner level, is that fair to say? Or how that, that, that would be correct, yeah. So you go in and the, I, th I think it was about the first month and a half of each, you know, module that it was very slow paced. So there was a lot of concepts that for I had already seen and studied. So they were quite easy for me. But one of my friends in my lecture, she was like, oh my God, I can't get my hair around this. So it was good for her to have people like me that had already done it, that would help her with it. But um, yeah, it's very beginner based for a lot of the modules. For example, for me that I had never done physics, going into a beginner's uh, level of physics was very handy and very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So you're wearing both hats there then. You're, you're kind of coming in as, <laughs> coming in as this, the, the, the knowledgeable one and then also trying to pick up something new. Um, and then going to second year, does it kind of ramp up a good bit then or, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, in first year, they kind of set the basis for each of the modules. And then when you keep going, throughout the years it just kind of gets harder and, and more like in depth mm. and there will be required then modules that you'll have to take in each year it's just as you say to give you that foundation and then there are like well elective or at least um ones that you can choose what you want non-compulsory modules i guess to make up your credit right. base so what did you choose then in second year was there much in the way of optional modules in second year i didn't have any optional modules but in third year I do. And last semester I didn't have any. And this semester I could choose in biology between uh, plant responses and bioinformatics. And I decided to go with bioinformatics. What's the difference between those two? Yeah, Why did you choose bioinformatics? It's <laughs> <laughs> just plants and how they respond to different types of um, environmental so factors. And bioinformatics is like looking at data and analyzing it. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that for me it would be more helpful to just choose data analysis rather than plants. <laughs> okay. And then you have a final year option to take either one or two subjects. Yeah. So what's your thinking now? Thinking is that as of right now, I want to do both. So I want to do the double major option. Um, hopefully it will work out for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm planning on doing the double major option. And why would it be potentially not work out for you? As in, is there, you have to get certain grades? Like, depending on my grades, if I see that I'm doing a lot better in one subject than the other, which so far it's been kind of level, um, I will take one either or because I don't, for, for final year, you have to do a thesis. If you take the double major, you have to do a thesis for both of the subjects. And depending on my grades, for me, probably it would be best to do either or if one of my subjects was a lot better than the other. But if they're level, I'll go for the double major. Having with hopefully the double major, then, if that's your preference, moving into the next phase, um, I, I don't know, are you thinking of postgraduate study or what would you be thinking that you'd like to do with your degree? So I would love to go into cancer research. And for that, I'd have to do a cancer studies master which sadly Manu doesn't offer. But um, yeah, I'll have to go somewhere else to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what about um, if future plans? You're in Spain right now. Obviously, we're, we're yeah. in the middle of um, yeah. a pandemic. <laughs> is there anything, incidentally, in, is there anything in your degree in biology that, that's kind of resonates with the pandemic and what you were hearing in the media and, and your own study is there anything that you kind of think wow that yeah that really rings a bell actually yeah, so when on the media they're talking about like the, the vaccine um they keep talking about all these um protein sequences and stuff like that and I, it just keeps bringing back a bell to immunology that we did last semester and we keep I keep hearing concepts and I'm like oh yeah I know that and when they talk about certain things I'm like yeah I did that I did it in college <laughs> <laughs> And it's great to just explain to your friends and family. They're like, they're talking about this. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is attending her classes. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> now I'm going to college. <laughs> um, excellent. Can you just give us some words of advice for future potential applicants to the degree, um, your degree or Manuth in general? So I would say, first of all, don't be scared. <laughs> um, I think everyone goes into a science degree thinking oh my god it's going to be so hard I'm going to struggle and 
you will not because first few maps, as I said, the first month and a half of first year, it's just very beginner based and they will settle down, set, settle down um, base concepts for you just to kind of like get you going and for you to understand the really basic concepts of each module. And then things do progressively get harder as you would expect, but don't be scared. I know a lot of people have struggled with maths in first year because they didn't quite get the concept well, either if they, because they did ordinary level in school or higher level in school, there is a really good um, math support center in the library that if you go in, they can help you with um, all these things and they can kind of like guide you in your assignments and it's very, very handy and very helpful. So I would 100% recommend them go into that. I went to that myself. <laughs> and um, yeah, just to kind of like, just keep your head down um, work at it every day as you're going to your lectures then go home and kind of revise it I know myself I did that and it worked for me and I know a lot of people that didn't do that and didn't work for them so um, yeah just kind of like don't be afraid of asking for help and just keep your head down work away and as I said if you do need help go to those that can help you because I promise you that if you go to your lectures or um do tutorials and ask for help they will just they'll be there they'll be hard to help well thanks very much claudia it was really interesting chatting to you today and all the best for the next stages of your studies